Welcome to my new calculus channel. I am John Gabriel. In this video, I'd like to talk about Cantor's bijective cardinality. Now, a lot of mainstream academics tend to think that Cantor's ideas were really great and there is a lot of theory that is built on the approach of Cantor's bijective cardinality ideas. For example, we have the triants finite numbers, we have uh, the actual theory of countable and uncountable sets. And there's quite a lot of other theory out there which is based on the original ideas of Cantor regarding bijective cardinality. So what, what does bijective cardinality mean? Well if you take a look at this diagram that you see here on the screen, um, Cantor claims that every point on this line here can be mapped to every point on this line here and vice versa. Or that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points on this line and the points on this line. So if you're looking at the green point there, which has an abscess of 5 or an x-coordinate of 5, that 5 corresponds to 10 on this line here. In other words, 5, 3 goes to 10, 1. And you can move this across like that. And it almost seems that what Cantor said is true, doesn't it? Well, this diagram here is indeed very deceptive. And there are many things that are not immediately evident in this, uh, which have to be sorted out through reasoning and sound logic rather than just some whimsical ideas of mathematicians who have very little knowledge about what mathematics is all about. That would be most of the establishment. I'm going to show you very shortly, in fact I'm going to prove to you that what Cantor said is completely untrue. Cantor in fact stated that the number of points on this line are the same as the number of points on that line. In fact there's nothing you can say about the points, the number of points on any line. <coughs> But Cantor's ideas eventually led to different infinities or levels of infinities. In this case here, we have this infinity being the same as the infinity on the blue line. In other words, the blue line has the same number of points as the red line. Well, as I said, one can never say anything about the number of points. Why? Because they have no dimension, no extent, and they can't be counted. Unfortunately, most of modern academics' perception or understanding of number comes from the mythological real number line. Um, but rather than go off on a tangent, let's see what happens as we move this point across. Now, we think that we're covering every point, don't we? Well, what? Oh, look at that. Suddenly, suddenly, we have 15 going where? 15 goes where? 15? Yeah. Which point does it go to? There's no bijective function for that. There's, there's a bijection for every other point that we choose. It doesn't mean that every point on that line gives us a different bijective function, as you see up here. In fact, even this GeoGebra software is a little deceptive because it's not covering every point between 5 and 25. It may appear that way, but that's not what that is not what's happening. And this here explains that that really isn't happening. Okay, and so there isn't a bijective function for every point on the red line to the blue line or vice versa. But it does seem that way, and if one doesn't notice that little glitch there, 
it will appear that what Cantor said might be true. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. Cantor was the father of all mathematical cranks. And there's a good reason he ended up in a mental asylum. Okay, well, enough of that. Let's take a look at the proof that this idea is false. Okay. Consider the following diagram. This diagram now is very similar to what you just saw here, right? This little triangle here could be interpreted as this triangle here. So let the length of this line here be k, and half of k be the blue line. In order for it to be true that every location on k2, on this line here, can be mapped to every location on k, we must have k divided by 2 times infinity equal to k divided by infinity. Right? We don't really care what infinity is because we can't obviously know all the number of points. But we're going to see very logically and reasonably that what Cantor said was indeed a load of rubbish. And those who believed him can only be called idiots, which is most of modern academia and those who propagate the rubbish that Cantor wrote about and claimed. Okay, so here we have this little identity here, which must be true if what Cantor is saying is true. Let's just simplify things a little bit. Let t equal to k divided by infinity, so that half t is equal to t, simply cancelling out the infinity part, simply cancelling out the k over the infinity part, making a t. But if we look at e here, this implies that a half is equal to 1, right? Which is obviously false. Therefore, it is impossible for every location in K2 to be mapped to K, because a half is not equal to 1. Now, all this tells us is that there's been a scaling from this line to this line, or vice versa. In other words, this line here is exactly twice this line, or this line is half this line. That's all it's saying. The only value that would satisfy this identity here, E, is 0, because half times 0 is equal to 0. But that would imply that both segments, these segments here, are both equal to what? Both equal to 0, or of equal length, right? which is a contradiction to the initial which is in contradiction to the initial assumption that one line segment is half the length of the other so what ignorant mainstream academics fail to notice is that Cantor's ideas were known by cartographers long before his time that is cartographers knew that scaling was possible using the same idea and so any line can be scaled in this way. More generally, if a line is denoted by length p and another line by p of n, then this identity implies that 1 over n is equal to 1. And once again, this is only possible if n is equal to 1. That is, if the lines are of the same length. That is the only time we can say that a bijection exists between each line between the points of each line. Otherwise, we can say nothing about the number of points on each line or the correspondence between the points on one line and the other line. So even Cantor's colleagues ridiculed him. Kronecker ridiculed him. Wittgenstein ridiculed him. Many of his colleagues ridiculed him. Unfortunately, the idiot mathematician David Hilbert came along much later and decided that he was going to be a follower of Cantor. And the rest, unfortunately, was very bad news. Um, Cantor's rot permeated most of mathematics. And as a result, we are having to deal with a mathematics that is full of inconsistencies, paradoxes, a set theory that is really broken so badly that it can't really advance anymore. And this is the current status quo of modern academia. You've been watching 
the New Calculus Channel. I'm John Gabriel. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll join me next time when I ridicule modern academics a little more and publish some more truths that are not very popular and also the reason I'm not well liked. Thank you.